Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and here we go with a new tier list ranking all of the characters that got upgraded since the start of the year. So we're talking the Warriors of the Sky Part 2 update, as well as the mid-month Infinity Warps slash Spider-Verse update. We made a couple of additional changes to some of the existing meta to show a shift in power, but otherwise we're mostly focusing on those new upgrades, new tier threes, new tier fours, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to start off by going through the Warriors of the Sky Part 2 update. We'll go sort of in chronological order. War Tiger, unfortunately, does not get nearly enough of a buff, and that's why he remains above me in the borderline category. And you could make the case that he deserves to be a little bit lower, depending on your usage rate for him. But uh, War Tiger just doesn't do enough damage. That's just straight up the issue. Still a really good pickup for new players because he has a skill cooldown lead and he has auto healing and a very easy play style. But unfortunately, doesn't really do anything to contest all of the combat types that we've seen get upgrades, especially in the tier four category, which essentially makes it very difficult for tier threes uh, or transcended characters to crack any sort of value category unless they have a support like you know valkyrie sif etc or they have insane damage or some niche use in something like abx or abl so yeah war tiger doesn't really go anywhere special shadow shell on the other hand holy titty balls uh titty balls is the name of the game because shadow shell basically just blows the she just basically blew up the idea of how strong a speed type could be at level 80 she can do a lot of the stages that my tier 4 black widow can do so that sort of puts it into perspective and then of course at tier 4 she just blows up pve content very odd that she struggles with abx but she does do as well if not better than black widow in abl she has a more flexible build being able to basically use any ctp under the sun um well not any like any pve ctp right she can use an energy she can use a destruction she can use a judgment and she can use a rage so super flexibility there and then i think what a lot of people forget is she's still the third best member again war tiger just gets the shaft constantly for the warriors of the sky pvp team we didn't see this team materialize my guess is not that many players want to invest in Blue Dragon and Shadow Shell Tier 4 and give them both PvP builds, depending, I mean, especially considering how good they are in PvE, but uh, that's still a possibility, right? And for AC people and stuff like that, that is a strong, like, her, her, her passive for Warriors of the Sky, it says right here with the support thing, gives them all defense, like a 50% all defense, and I believe super armor, which is pretty nutty for PvP. So very, very strong character, essentially the best speed type we have right now, um, I would say at level 80 or at tier 4. Um, the only issue is her 1 versus 1 in PvP is not going to be, in my opinion, as good as potentially Black Widow, depending on how you build her, but then also Spider-Man. We'll get to Spider-Man in a second, but I just wanted to cover the, the Warriors of the Sky. And then Miles Morales. So Miles Morales was shoehorned into the Warriors of the Sky update. He was obviously hinting, heralding the uh, Spider-Verse update to come. Miles is really, really good. I think a lot of people, their eyes immediately went to the Japanese forum leak. And oh man, Spider-Man Tier 4. So Miles basically got overlooked by a lot of players. But he's very strong. Again, flexible build. Being able to use procs. Being able to use a judgment. Really strong. Very easy to play. Tanky enough. And... Despite the, in my opinion, the error by the devs by making his leadership only for Spider-Man, Peter Parker, uh, I do still think like that they'll still add some value to his character because you can play them side by side and he does buff Spider-Man. He's basically the best leadership besides Echo uh, or like Wave, I guess, for, for Spider-Man right now if you don't consider tier twos. If you consider tier twos, then you also have to consider like Nick Fury and he starts to drop down the list, but otherwise he does still have that going for him and he's quite solid there. So that basically does it for the Warriors of the Sky update. Uh, just as an aside, I moved Angel down from the bottom of meta-ish over to lead slash support. His value didn't really materialize and I kind of overestimated him. It happens. Um, and then for the... Uh, for Venom, for the combat uh, tier 4s, I felt like his meta-defining status wasn't really warranted anymore. 
so i moved him down uh, two spots from second to fourth that could still be uh, a little bit overrated depending on your opinions of the character i know it's kind of hotly debated by certain uh groups of people but i feel like it's a fair assessment of his overall value and i don't want to spend too much time talking about it but i think some people underestimate or forget that he does have pvp value whereas some other combat types do not have any pvp value and it's sort of taken as a whole so then we move over to the new update that we just got recently spider verse you know spider-man arachnid 2099 chasm and then the upgrades for the infinity warps character so obviously arachnid if he gets a uniform he's also going to be getting a um a transcendence but then weapon hex ghost panther and iron hammer get it now if you guys can't see iron hammer that's kind of by design he's down here at the bottom of lead slash support iron hammer doesn't really get anything better after getting a transcendence it just allows you to use his energy damage skill cooldown lightning damage or energy attack lightning damage skill cooldown leadership has one of the best leaderships in the game for new players so i still think he's a great early game pickup especially since he's a universal and you can use him in shadowland but i think by the time you get to doing world boss legend and then you need leaderships I don't know if I would invest in transcending Iron Hammer for his leadership specifically. I think there are better leadership characters who can also, not that they have the leadership ability, but that they are, like they have a good leadership that can just do more damage than Iron Hammer. I haven't tested him yet, so this is, you know, a tentative ranking, but let's be honest, is he going to be better than Hyperion? Probably not, right? Like that's, that's the best case scenario is you're going to get a sort of Hyperion-esque performance out of him, and that's only considering his damage in PvE and his combo leadership. That's not considering PvP at all, where I know Hyperion has some value, where Iron Hammer will have absolutely zero value in PvP. We're talking about a 2018 designed character that does not have any uniforms to speak of. So there's no way he's competing with Hyperion, who got his uniform back in 2021, and, um, you know, that was his second uniform. Yeah, it's just, it's completely different. Uh, and then Ghost Panther and Weapon Hex. We're not going to spend too long about this. I do want to make a video on them still, but they're both also in the leadership slash support category, but they're both much higher on the list. Weapon Hex, a bit underrated, a bit forgotten, but she gives you a heal, which is very, very good for specific characters, characters that take a lot of damage and don't have a lot of healing on their own, or characters that just need that extra healing for keeping them topped up and then ghost panther probably one of the best supports in the game for fire element characters uh gene gray comes to mind immediately but there are other options and ghost panther is just an insane support and he doubles as a leadership if you don't have a better leadership because his leadership offers you crit damage crit rate i believe and fire damage so very very strong you can see some of the fastest gbr solos in the world uh, using a Jean Grey, like a, a mighty or a brilliant rage Jean Grey stacked with a Ghost Panther and a Valkyrie or something like that because he just makes her fly. For those of you that don't know, uh, you know, whatever number of fire damage or, or, or an elemental damage for an elemental character is worth more than the same amount of energy or physical attack. So just as a quick example, uh, if you had a leadership that gave Jean Grey 50% energy attack and you had a passive that gave 40% fire damage, the 40% fire damage would be better than the 50% energy attack. And of course, 50% fire damage would be better than 50% energy attack. It's, it's more than a one-to-one -one, uh, value in terms of uh, the buffs that elemental damage characters get. Moving over to the last member of the Infinity Warps, Arachnite 2099. I think he's a solid PvE option with not too much other value, you know, emanating there besides the Infinity Warps leadership. And his value could definitely go up if the other Infinity Warps characters got reworks because they synergize so well together. The fact that Ghost Panther can give them all buffs to all allies, etc. That's really nice. But it's hard to put him any higher knowing that he is outclassed by the likes of Chasm. Miles Morales and Spider-Man for different reasons. It's not necessarily damage. There are some clips that, uh, you know, could be saying that Arachnid is about as good offensively as these two, but it's more about the other value that they offer, right? So Miles offers a leadership. Miles offers this damage in other game modes. 
chasm offers the support he's also a, a speed villain which is very rare so it's, it's in terms of their overall value and, and the totality of uh, all of their benefits rather than just purely damage so i just want to make that clear but arachnite's damage is no joke um it's quite it's quite nice it's quite good i was gonna say nutty it's not nutty it's there though uh, quickly want to just touch on makari and electro who both got downgrades from meta gods to meta ish they're just being pushed out by characters who are as good or better than they are for the same game modes and i'm not saying that chasm is better than electro but you're just getting competing powers that create less of a vacuum right if you're if you're dominating a game mode because you're the only option whatsoever you're more of a meta god you're more of a meta defining but as other characters come in that can either replace you or compete with you your individual value goes down and chasm being a support for spider-verse characters also being much easier to obtain than electro because he's a, a premium character that does hurt his value a little bit and then no secret here with makari we've gotten so many strong female speed heroes you know kamala shuri shadow shell etc uh, that it makes it difficult for makari to maintain her, her you know her grasp on the meta uh, and then we come over to chasm and spider-man so i'll talk about spider-man in a second i know i'm leaving him to the end because it's the most controversial i guess uh chasm i think he's really good um, I think he's he's strong uh, in terms of his, his damage, but he also has that really strong support. It's a little bit disappointing to see that he doesn't straight up beat Green Goblin for ABX. At the same time, I'm kind of happy that Green Goblin still has value outside of a leadership and a support. It's kind of nutty how strong Green Goblin is, but um, I think they're going in the right direction with introducing more speed villains. Like we absolutely still need more of these characters. And the fun thing and the nice thing about Chasm is even if he gets replaced damage-wise by a stronger speed villain in the future, he'll always have that really strong Spider-Verse um, passive for Spider-Man, for Miles, for Arachnite, for anybody else that gets introduced. If Spider-Gwen gets a tier 4 or whatever, if Spider-Woman finally gets a uniform, he'll always have that for him. So I think that's a bit underrated by the community, and I do think that's a reason why he deserves to be there. Um, and he has, and he's, again, he's also very rare in the sense that he's the, one of the only villains besides, I think, Colossus with Phoenix Force that has access to the leadership passive for White Fox, which is nice. And then we come to Spider-Man. Oh, Spider-Man. So, yeah, I think his, so I, I gave him PvP tag, I gave him needs max build tag, and I gave him the tier 4 tag. From what I've seen from tier 4 uh, players who have him built for PvE, I don't think he is worth, or sorry, worthy of the Dormammu GBR tag, so I didn't give him that. Um, his PVE value, I, I don't want to understate it, but I also don't want to overstate it. So I think that's kind of an important sort of tightrope to walk and balance. He's not bad for PVE content. It's just that he doesn't, he's not good in a way that pushes the envelope, and we already know how under needed underutilized speed hero male characters are like it's it's not a coincidence here guys that you don't see any other right like it you see them here sure but you know there's a reason for that abx abl even world boss legend there's just not that many speed male hero restrictions so there's just not many chances for them to shine if there were I probably would value spider-man more but that's that's just a design choice that the devs made for the game like it doesn't just affect spider-man it's going to affect ant-man the same way etc so i think for spider-man to kind of break that ceiling i would have needed to see his damage more on par with shadow shells uh, if his damage was more insane like shadow shells especially at level 80 uh, then i feel like i would have had no problem putting him in meta defining because I do think he is going to create kind of a situation like Adam Warlock where um, he's going to check a lot of combat types the way that, or sorry, he's going to check a lot of speed uh, uh, blast types the way that Adam Warlock was checking a lot of combat types for the time being by basically just one-shotting them out of existence. Now, how much play he's going to get in PvP because of Gene having two lives and Carnage having an inv uh, invincibility and more mortality thing, we don't know. I don't know. It's it's going to be, it's basically just going to matter or, or depend on how much of the player base adopts Spider-Man versus Carnage. Like, if you're asking me, Carnage is just an obvious, not obvious, but 
I would say Carnage is a better option if you if you have to if you can build both of them for PvP, just because Carnage is gonna compete as well or better than Spider-Man versus everyone, plus he counters Spider-Man, right? Spider-Man does counter Spider-Man, yes, but that immortality, especially because it goes up to seven seconds, it's very hard to um, it's very hard to compete with. And I've, I saw someone recently on one of my videos saying if a character doesn't have revive or immortality, you can't consider them like they're not PVP meta. I'm not saying I agree with them, but I can definitely understand why they're saying that. And, you know, as good as we thought Adam was, he ended up just being a one shot merchant, high risk, high reward. And he, and even he had the revive and he hasn't stayed in the meta despite that. So can we really expect Spider-Man to be more meta defining than Adam when he's basically Adam minus one life? I'm not sure. Time will tell. Again, you can't undervalue how strong his artifact can be if you have it at five stars or six stars with the tier four. That's a lot of giga dodge, whatever you want to call it. But um, I think time will tell. And at this point, considering his popularity, I would rather undervalue him a little bit and, and you know save some people from fomo then overvaluing him getting you know full into the spider-man hype train copium and then if it turns out he's a bit more of a not a i don't want to say flash in the pan but like you know if it turns out that he's not doesn't have the sticking power the staying power for pvp um some people are going to be disappointed with that so all air on the side of caution i usually prefer to undervalue characters than overvaluing them for these tier lists and then obviously next month i can just reevaluate it it's super easy um so yeah hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think thank you so much for watching smash the like button support the channel and i'll see you in the next one take care